understandably people everywhere in the world are focusing now on their environmental concerns uh, much less than uh, on their economic concerns. So there's much less attention to the issue of climate change uh, than there was a few short years ago. But the fact of the matter is that uh, economically we're not going to be able to succeed as a species unless we find a sustainable way to grow. And we can find a sustainable way to grow only if we deal with climate change. And this is the paramount issue of our time, uh, the paramount issue of our century. We must find a way to continue uh, to uh, create a shared prosperity for humanity while also protecting our planet from carbon emissions that are destroying the planet. Uh, I'm encouraged that uh, in the aftermath of the disappointments uh, in Copenhagen and elsewhere, uh, those who are trying to do something about climate change throughout the world are beginning to get realistic. Uh, they're beginning to put together uh, the beginnings of an architecture that can address climate change globally in a real and practical and effective way. What we lack now is a sense of urgency politically to put this issue at the top of our agenda where it rightly belongs. And the only way that climate change will go to the top of our agenda is if our leaders understand and explain to us that climate change is an economic issue. Climate change is a jobs issue. And we're not going to have the economy and the jobs we want to have and need to have unless we do something about climate change. To some extent, I think the World Trade Organization is a model for what um, an environmental architecture to address climate change could be. Um, to some extent, I think the WTO is a model for many of the efforts we need globally to address inherently global issues such as climate change. Climate change is at the top of our agenda when it comes to needed additional global governance. Uh, I think we're going to see the climate change architecture emerge uh, on an ad hoc basis over a period of time and incrementally. Uh, we might start with coalitions of the willing among various countries who are willing to make certain commitments. And in the end, you're going to have some of the same issues in uh, the climate uh, architecture that uh, we've had to deal with in trade. If we're going to have uh, understandings and agreements, will they take the form of real rules? If we're going to have real rules, how real will they be if they're not truly enforceable? If they're going to be truly enforceable, how will we enforce them and how will we just settle disputes about uh, how they should be enforced? Now, these are questions that uh, those who are trying to address climate change are only now just beginning to ask. So we're going to have to accelerate that process. The only way to accelerate it is by putting climate change at the top of our list overall in the world and imparting a sense of urgency about it. That takes political will and it takes political leadership in every country in the world. I think the first thing that should be done is the first thing that can be done. Uh, the first thing that can be done is uh, to finish the good work that has already been done toward uh, putting uh, the red effort together to deal with deforestation. About 20 percent of all carbon emissions worldwide are from deforestation. Uh, much effort has gone into putting together uh, uh, a process uh, for mitigation, for improvement. Uh, much effort has gone into bringing countries from all parts of the world together to make this process work. Uh, we're almost there. Um, we should conclude that effort, begin making it work, and then it can be an example uh, that can show us that we can do more in other areas uh, where carbon emissions are a challenge globally. In the area of climate change, uh, I don't think there's any question that businesses everywhere are far ahead of government. Um, uh, businesses 
understand that climate change is real, that uh, we've caused it, and that we need to do something about it, um, or the world will be a perilous place. Uh, they also understand that those who figure out soonest and best how to do something about it uh, will make a good profit because the future will be theirs. Um, politicians can pretend that they live in a fantasy world. Businesses can't. They have a bottom line, they have a deadline, they have shareholders, they have the need to make a profit so they can uh, pay a dividend, pay paychecks. They don't have the luxury of indulging in themselves in the way that politicians do. And this is one reason why I think business has often been ahead of politics.